Hello everyone. Today we are going to see in detail about the characteristics of cervical vertebrae. The cervical vertebrae are seven in number and it forms the axial skeleton of the neck. The seven cervical vertebrae are classified into typical cervical vertebrae and atypical cervical vertebrae. Typical cervical vertebrae are those vertebrae which present similar features and atypical cervical vertebrae are those vertebrae which present special features. The typical cervical vertebrae are the third, fourth, fifth and sixth cervical vertebrae. They all present similar features that is the characteristics of the third, fourth, fifth and sixth vertebrae are the same. The atypical cervical vertebrae are the first, second and seventh cervical vertebrae. That is the first, second and seventh cervical vertebrae. They present special features. That is these three vertebrae. They have got some special features different from that of the typical vertebrae and typical cervical vertebrae. The first cervical vertebra is named as the atlas. The second cervical vertebra is named as the axis. And the seventh cervical vertebra is called as vertebra prominence. Now let's see the characteristics of a typical cervical vertebra. So here is a typical cervical vertebra. First of all about the body. Here is the body. This is the body. And the body is the smallest of all the vertebrae. So cervical vertebrae has got the smallest body among all other vertebrae. Cervical vertebrae has got the smallest body among all vertebrae. And the transverse measurement of the body is more than the andro-posterior measurement. So hold the bone in an anatomical position. And here is the body. And this measurement becomes the transverse measurement of the body. And this measurement is the andro-posterior measurement of the body. And you can see that the transverse measurement is greater than the andro-posterior measurement. So this is one characteristic feature of the body of cervical vertebrae. That is the transverse measurement is greater than the andro-posterior measurement. So that's about the body of the typical cervical vertebra. And next about the vertebral foramen. So here is the vertebral foramen. And you can see that the vertebral foramen is larger than the body. Okay, so the vertebral foramen is large in proportion to the size of the body. And the shape of the vertebral foramen is nearly triangular. The vertebral foramen is nearly triangular in shape and it is large in proportion to the size of the body. The vertebral foramen is nearly triangular in shape and it is large in proportion to the size of the body. Next, let's see about the pedicles. So these are the pedicles. These are the pedicles. This is one pedicle and this is the other pedicle. So the pedicles project laterally and backwards. So you can see that the both the pedicles they project laterally and backwards. The pedicles project laterally and backwards and the pedicles are united to the body midway between its upper and lower borders okay so here is the body this cylindrical part is the body and this is the upper border of the body and this is the lower border of the body and midway between the upper and lower borders of the body so here comes the attachment of the pedicle you can see the attachment of the pedicle here to the body and this attachment of the pedicle to the body it is exactly to the midway between the upper border and the lower border of the body. So you can see here this is the pedicle and the attachment of the pedicle is exactly midway between the upper border and the lower border of the body. So the pedicles are attached to the body midway between its upper border and the lower border. So here is the pedicle. Then next we are going to see about the laminae. So these are the two laminae and you can see that the laminae fuse together in the midline to form the spinous process okay so these are the two laminae and the laminae are long and narrow okay so when compared to the vertebrae of other regions the laminae of the cervical vertebrae are long and narrow 
then next is about the spinous process so here is the spinous process as you know the spinous process is formed by the fusion of the two laminae in the midline and spinous process of the cervical vertebrae is very short and in the end or at the tip it is bifid so at the tip it is bifid in nature bifid means it ends in two tubercles it ends in two tubercles at the tip so that is about the spine or the spinous process the spine is short and it is bifid it ends in two terminal tubercles at its tip then next is about the articular processes so you know that articular processes are of two the superior articular processes and the inferior articular processes and the articular processes they project from the junction of the laminae and the pedicle so here is the pedicle and here is the laminae so this point is the junction between the laminae and the pedicle so here is the articular process so this these two are the superior articular process and these two are the inferior articular processes okay so these two are the superior articular processes and these two are the inferior articular processes the superior articular processes it faces upwards and backwards so when you hold the bone in anatomical position this is the anterior aspect of the bone this is the posterior aspect this is the superior aspect and this is the inferior aspect okay so here are the superior articular processes with the superior articular facets and these superior articular facets it faces upwards and backwards the superior articular facets the superior articular facets it faces upwards and backwards then about the inferior articular facets here are the inferior articular facets hold the bone in anatomical position and this is the inferior articular facet this is the other inferior articular facet you can see that the, both the inferior articular facets they face downwards and forwards inferior articular facets face downwards and forwards next is about the transverse process so the transverse process of the cervical vertebrae it is pierced by a foramen called as foramen transverse area so this foramen which you see on either sides it is called as the foramen transverse area so this foramen transverse area it is present on the transverse process of the cervical vertebrae and this presence of foramen transverse area it is the characteristic feature of the cervical vertebrae and it is the most important feature of the cervical vertebrae which distinguishes the cervical vertebrae from the other vertebrae and the transverse process is pierced in its midpoint by the foramen transverse area and the transverse process has got an anterior root and a posterior root so this whole thing is the transverse process okay and then you have the foramen transverse area at the center of the transverse process and the transverse process consists of two roots of origin one is the anterior root and the other is the posterior root okay so this is the anterior root and this is the posterior root so this whole thing is the transverse process and transverse process in the middle is pierced by the foramen transverse area and there are two roots of origin for the transverse process one is anterior root and the posterior root so this is the anterior root and this is the posterior root okay here is the anterior root and here is the posterior root and these anterior root and the posterior root they are connected to each other on the lateral side of the foramen transverse area by a bar of bone and it is called as costo transverse bar okay so here is the anterior root of the transverse process here is the posterior root of the transverse process and there is the foramen transverse area and this anterior root and the posterior root they are connected to each other on the lateral side on the lateral aspect of the foramen transverse area by a 
piece of bone or by a bar of bone and this is named as costotransverse bar and this anterior root and the posterior root they both end here in a tubercle called as the anterior tubercle and the posterior tubercle respectively okay so the anterior roots root ends in a tubercle called as anterior tubercle and posterior root ends in a tubercle called as the posterior tubercle and the foramen transverse area the foramen transverse area of all cervical vertebrae except the seventh cervical vertebrae transmits the vertebral artery and vein and also the sympathetic fibers from inferior cervical ganglion 